Hello, welcome to lesson 2.2, using algebra tiles to simplify algebraic expressions. What we're going to do today is we're going to model all the algebraic expressions that we're going to simplify in a manner, a lot of different manners, but we're going to use algebra tiles to do it, to kind of get the hang of it before we start writing our own rules for how to do it without the algebra tiles. Let's first start by taking a look at the tiles we're going to use. We're going to start with a big blue square, represents x squared. Next, we'll use a green rectangle to represent x. And finally, a smaller yellow square to represent 1. Then, to represent the negative versions, or the opposites of each of these, we'll uh, use the same size shape, but instead of being the color, they'll be red. So we have now x squared, x, and 1, and then their opposites, negative x squared, negative x, negative 1. On your paper, when you have to draw these, probably the easiest way to do this is to, for the positive ones, just draw the shape, but don't color it in. For the negative ones, draw the shape, but then color it in. You don't have to color it fully, but put some sort of mark in it so that you know it's negative, okay? The first example we'll try today is 4x plus 6x, and all we're gonna do is, is try to model that first. So we'll start with 4x means we'll need four of these. And we're going to add that to 6x, so we'll need six of these. And that will give us 4x plus 6x. For our next example, we'll try x squared minus 4x plus 2. And again, all we're doing here is modeling. So we'll start off with x squared. And then minus 4x is going to be 4 of the negative x's. So and then plus 2. We'll take 2 of the yellows. So now we have x squared minus 4x plus 2. For our third example here, we'll try negative 2x squared plus x plus 3. A little bit different, we'll start off with two negatives. So we have two, our negative 2x squared plus an x plus 3, and that's again positive, so we have three ones. And that models negative 2x squared plus 1x plus 3. For our next set of examples, we're going to try to start simplifying. That means we're going to, if, if these were regular numbers, we'd have 4 plus 8. We would simplify that to make that 12. We're going to do that here, except we're going to start using the variables and whatnot. So we have 3x squared minus x squared. We need to, to uh, model that. So we'll start with 3x squared. And then we're going to subtract x squared. So we'll put that one over here. So we have 3x squared minus x squared. Now what we want to do is try to match up different things. Okay, opposite sides. So here we have a positive x squared and a negative x squared. And we know that that will cancel each other out. That's called a zero pair. So I'm going to write those over here. or bring those over there. And that's called a zero pair. We look for zero pairs because those are the ones that cancel each other out and have no effect. What's remaining is our answer. And what remains here is 2x squared. So that means that 3x squared minus x squared equals 2x squared. Now you may be thinking while I was working that problem out, I kept saying 3x squared minus x squared and I just went ahead and, and you saw how I put one over there. When you don't have a variable or a number in front of the variable, that means one. So an x squared means one x squared, but we don't write the one. It's not necessary. I can look at this and go, well, how many x squareds do I have? I've got one of them. There's no need to write it to make it shorter. In fact, all it does is make it longer. So at this point, whenever you see x squared, you know that, that means one x squared. If you see negative one, or if you see negative x squared, 
you know that means negative 1x squared. But you'll see all of us write this instead. So you can go ahead and get in the habit of not putting the 1. There's no need for it. I always put just the x squared or the negative x squared. But do understand that means 1x and negative 1x. For our next example, we have 2x minus 3 plus 3x plus 1. We'll set that one up by doing 2x minus 3, so 3 negatives, plus 3x plus 1. Now we want to look to start combining things, so we'll take these three green ones, add them to the two green ones, and then we look for a zero pair here, so we eliminate them, get them out of the way, and that leaves us with 5x is here, and minus 2 there, so that tells us that 2x minus 3 plus 3x plus 1 will give us 5x minus 2. Next we'll get into distribution. We have, we'll start with 2 times x squared plus 2x minus 4. Now when we do this, we want to start by modeling what's on the inside. We have x squared, 2x, and minus 4. Now since we're distributing, that means we take whatever's on the outside and we multiply it by everything on the inside. So we take this and we basically double it since we're multiplying by 2. We have x squared, we have two x's, and our minus 4. And then, like before, now that we multiply it by 2, we combine everything. So we end up with all of these all matched together which gives us 2x squared plus 4x minus 8. Finally, for our last example, we'll be distributing a negative 1. So again, we'll start by modeling what's inside. We have 3x and then we have minus 5. Now, since we're multiplying by 1, we know that that means to take whatever we have and go to the opposite. So if we have three x's here that are positive, well, if we multiply by negative 1, they're going to all change to negative x's. And likewise, our five ones will all change to positive 5's. So that now we end up with negative 3x plus 5. Everything is just flipped. Well, I hope you enjoyed our little video today. Now it's time for the question of the day. Make sure you come up with something so when you come to class, you're ready to have a good discussion and, and delve a little deeper into this. Have a nice day.